is we want to be able to graph this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, last class period, we've talked about the important parts of, the func of a quadratic function. So I want to go through those again and just let you guys know, before you even get into graphing, the main important thing is just finding the information about the graph. The first thing we can always look at is the amplitude. And I think the amplitude is the easiest information, part of information, to figure out because remember your amplitude is your a in your function, what's being multiplied by your function. So remember the amplitude is the absolute value of a. Therefore, we have the absolute value of negative 1 half, which is 1 half, right? So then we go ahead and take a look at it. So I know my amplitude is 1 half. That means the half distance from my max to my minimum on my graph is going to equal 1 half. The next is we like to look at the period. The period, if you remember, is 2, two pi divided by b. All right, this is the vocab you guys have to know for you guys to be able to graph. So the period is 2 pi divided by b. So we look at b. Remember, b is your coefficient of your x. Well, the coefficient of x is 1, 1 being divided by 2. So therefore, I have 2 pi divided by 1 half. So to solve for my period, I need to make sure I multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom. That multiplies the 1, and then I'm left with a period of 4 pi. All right? Go with this. Those are the first two. You guys have to know how to do that. Find the amplitude and the period. That's why we spent that first part of the homework, Michael, just figuring out those two elements. Now the next thing, if you guys remember, when we did our parent graph, we talked about critical points. Remember, there was the maximum, there was the minimum, and there were x-intercepts, correct? Well, all of our critical points are equal distances from each other. So what I want to do is I want to find that distance between each critical point. So what I just label is I like to label my critical points. And to find the critical points, all you do is take your period and divide it by 4. Therefore, my period is going to be pi. Then the next thing we do is when, you, when we started our graphs, when we started uh, graphing the parent graphs, we graphed one period. And our one period was from 0 to 2 pi. So what I want to do is if there's any transformations in my graph, I want to see where my graph for the first period is going to start and the end. So what you do is you take whatever's inside your function for the start, and you set that equal to 0. And then for the end, you're going to take whatever's inside your period and set that equal to 2 pi. By solving for x. Wait, wait. The start is where you, the x over 2 is whatever's in parentheses? Mm -hmm. okay. So whatever you do is you take whatever's inside your parentheses and set it equal to 0. That's going to be where your first period, you could say, is going to start and end. Yes? OK, we're going to talk. Well, let's go through this. So let's start graphing, all right? So we found all the information. So let's take a look at what our graph is going to resemble. OK, so here's going to be kind of our starting line. Remember, there's four critical points that we talked about on graphing our thing, right? And we're going to go in the negative direction as well. Now, so what I said was, between each critical point was a distance of what? Pi. So you could say, here to here is pi, here to here is pi, here to here is pi, right? Each one of those distances is pi. So therefore, this first point is what? Pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. You see, I'm just adding pi to each one. The distance between the critical points is pi between each other. So I can also go in this negative direction. No, it's the critical point, which is whatever your period is, divided by 4. So it's always going to change. That's why I want you guys to figure it out. So now let's go through our looking at our graph. We also notice that there's a negative inside our function. So therefore, we're going to have a um, reflection over the x-axis. All right, so we're going to have a reflection over the x-axis because I have a negative a. All right. So let's remember what our sine function looked at. If you guys remember the sine function, the sine function crossed, or it started at 0, and then the first critical point was its maximum, and then it went down to its minimum, right? However, 
So we're going to start at zero. However, since we're reflecting, rather than the sine graph going up, we're now going to go down. Now the next thing is, if you remember, the amplitude of the parent graph was one and, and negative one. Right? We said it went up one and went down to negative one. However, this graph's amplitude is one half. So all you're going to do is, rather than going up to one, you're going to go up to one half. So rather than going up though, since this is the reflection, we're going to go down. So the first critical point is going to be the minimum. Then the next critical point is the x-axis. Next critical point will be the max and then x-axis. So the first period that I can graph of my function, negative 1 half sine of x over 2, is going to look like this. Then I just continue that form of the graph. going to look something like that. You start at x over two, I mean, start at zero, and then you go down by pi, but, but when do you know when to go like, up and then go right there? Well, you got to know what the parent graph looks like. Okay. See, remember the parent graph of sine goes up to one, down to negative one, and cross that pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. You got to remember that this graph looked like that. So you got to remember, that's what the sine graph looks like. So now all I'm doing is I'm reflecting that, shrinking it to 1 half, and the period's different. The period goes to 4 pi, so the period's getting extended. So you got to know what the parent graph looks like. That's the important thing to know what the shape is. Yes? So any time that we have, that we're using the sine, it's always going to be to reflect the graph. Yeah, I mean, anytime you're dealing with sine or cosine, you're, it's going to be based off of what the parent graph looks like. No, I mean, like, I'm still not understanding how you know when to go up or below yeah. the x axis. Like, how do we know the parent graph? Like, you know what I mean? Okay, well, if you guys remember, what would the parent graph look like? The parent graph had these x's here, and the parent graph goes up to 1. So you guys have to know what the parent graph looks like. So the parent graph of sine of x on this one. That's the parent graph of sine of x. So what you guys could see is, well, what's the difference? Oops, I'm sorry. That crosses there. Um, there we go. So that's what sine of x looks like. Why? Because I know what the parent graph looks like. The sine of x has a period of 2 pi, has an amplitude of 1. So that's sine of x. So what are the differences? What's changed? Well, my new period is not 2 pi. My new period is pi. That means it's going to take a distance of um, two more. Uh, it's going to take a distance of 4 pi for my period to complete a cycle. Rather than my amplitude being 1, my amplitude is 1 half. So that means my graph only goes as high as 1 half and below is 1 half. What else is different about the sine of x? Rather than being sine of x, it's negative. So it's reflected over the x-axis. Okay. So you guys can see how I made all these different transformations to the graph. So one way to do it, which I showed you guys last class, period, is you can always graph the parent function first and then make the necessary transformations like you did with kind of quadratics. You know, you graph the parent graph and then you say, oh, shift left, shift up, reflect, right? But for this, a lot of times just with our spacing, I like to find all the information and then just graph it with this information. However, you can always go back to looking at the parent graph and saying, how did it change from the parent graph to what I'm graphing? OK? We can go over another one if you guys want to.